Come on, Blue. Come on. Let's go, Blue. Good job. Come on. Come on. Good job, Blue. Come on. Good job, Blue. A few years ago on a prospecting trip, hey, I got attacked by a grizzly bear, and I'm very lucky to be alive today. Now I've got Blue here. She's been specially trained as a bear dog. This summer, when we're out in the bush together sniffing around, she's going to be worth her weight in gold. Al Doherty has been searching for gold for 24 years. He has walked over 30,000 miles of the toughest northern Canadian wilderness with very little success to date. And yet, He's considered one of the best prospectors in the business. The stakes are unbelievable, really. This season I could uh, turn over a single rock and find a billion dollars worth of gold. And you know what? I think I have a pretty good idea of exactly where to look. Al Doherty wouldn't be the first prospector to find gold in the Yukon Territory of Canada. A hundred years ago, it was the site of one of the greatest gold rushes the world has ever seen. Klondike Gold Rush was started by a part-time prospector by the name of George Carmack, though most people up until then called him Lion George. I had a premonition the night before. I dreamt I saw two giant king salmon with golden scales and gold coins for eyes. The next day while I was fishing, I dipped my pan in the creek and, good heavens above, pulled out a thumb-sized chunk of pure gold. I felt as if I had just dealt myself a royal flush at the game of life. When word got out of his discovery, close to a million people headed towards the Yukon in a frantic race to stake a claim before the gold ran out. A hundred thousand people made it to the foot of the Alaska mountains at the start of winter. Some had as much as a ton and a half of supplies each. Others, barely the summer clothes on their backs. They slipped and fell from the rocks. They froze solid in the blowing snow. Lying George Carmack had triggered the biggest epidemic of gold fever in the history of the world. You know, most people think the gold's been mined out of the Klondike. Sure, the old timers got five or ten million ounces. But I believe the real mother load is still out there somewhere. And this summer, Blue and I are going to find it. The prospector's toolkit has improved dramatically since the Klondike Gold Rush. Geologists refer to this contraption as the bird. Its proper name is a magnetometer. 
It allows Doherty to see through the bush, soil, and water, mapping the magnetic properties of the rock below. the bird cannot see gold itself, it can often find concentrations of mineral-rich deposits called anomalies, some of which appear as red zones on the magnetometer map. Hot spots originate deep beneath the Earth's surface. Intense heat and pressure cause the rock to sweat superheated water, which dissolves out minute particles of gold. When cracks appear in the rock, the gold-laden water flashes into steam, which cools as it rises, depositing the gold in the fissures. <laughs> 